the vision of 10 blocks per second is that you know, things become internet speed crypto, internet speed proof of work. I was imagining we can run with 100 blocks per second. What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back. Or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might actively escaping the matrix, scoping out the crypto ocean. So if you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto crew, we are on the brink of seeing Caspa soar to new heights. Looking at the project and the Caspa team, from what I've observed so far, Caspa's in good hands. The question is, crypto crew, will you have the long suffering or the patience to see Caspa blossom or at least draw closer to its full potential? Success on this crypto ocean, crypto crew, comes to the those who patiently wait. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. It will only be a matter of time before some of the major catalysts will unfold for Caspa. Kraken was just the first out of many tier 1 exchanges that will inevitably come. OKX already is invested in Caspa, which is a major tier 2 exchange that most likely will list Caspa somewhere in this bull run. Same goes for the top tier exchange in the United States, Coinbase. And Binance already has fully implemented Caspa and is ready to go. For example, with Binance, everything's ready, everything's in integrated and ready. Now keep in mind, Crypto Crew, no matter how great the exchanges are that Caspa will be listed on, exchanges are to buy and to sell your Caspa, not to keep your Caspa. Especially during this 2024-2025 bull run, we don't know what will happen, meaning we don't have any control of any external event. So make sure to store your Caspa, your KRC20 meme coins soon, and your other crypto investments on a cold storage. In my opinion, your best option is the tangent. Tangem Wallet. Tangem is easy to use and its defense has been great for me as well as many Caspians who have used the Tangem Wallet. This allows you to have full custody over your Caspa, your KRC20 meme coins, and your other cryptocurrencies. So if you wish to order your Tangem Wallet today, you can get 10% off, link in the description box below. Thank you for all of you who have ordered your Tangem Wallet using my referral link. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. Last Sunday, Caspa founder Jonathan Sampolinsky spoke at the Australian Crypto Convention where he talked about the future of Layer 1, answering the question whether Layer 1s are still relevant, why Jonathan is pushing beyond crescendo for a 100 blocks per second Caspa, whilst explaining the revolutionary Caspa block DAG technology. You should imagine that there's a live DAG flowing from left to right, and you have here a depiction of Caspa visual, visualizer. You have here a DAG with uh, roughly one block per second, and this is how Caspa operates today. And the vision of 10 blocks per second is that you know, things become internet speed crypto, internet speed proof of work. So you keep the same ethos, the same principles of Bitcoin, I mean, a Nakamoto system, proof of work, blocks, transactions, all the things you're familiar with, and you are sequencing the messages differently, sequencing the blocks differently in a way that is guaranteeing eventual agreement similarly to Nakamoto consensus. So we started with one block per second. Sutton took on the endeavor of writing things in Rust and enabling things to run on 10 blocks per second. And then I was imagining we can run with 100 blocks per second. There's an interesting question here. Why am I pushing for 100 blocks per second? So there are two reasons here. We had a, a Bitcoin core developer in our team. You know, he worked with us. His name is Eddie Chai. He's an applied photographer. He helped us, but he was very indifferent to our achievements. So I had like to grind on him and to ask him, hey, Eddie Chai, you know, what would make you less apathetic to Caspa? And he kind of shrugged and said, you know, Bitcoin. And then he said, okay, if you do 100 blocks per second, that will, that will be impressive and I might be somewhat excited. So that's reason number one. And reason number two is that I argue that you want to have competition between the sequencers regardless of confirmation types by increasing the network uh, speed from 10 blocks per second to 100 blocks per second, even though the user will not see any noticeable difference in responsiveness, the impact on the competitiveness of the sequencing is large. I'm basically setting the question how many sequencers are competing at uh, each consensus round. So what I mean by consensus round is quite simple. In Bitcoin, there's competition between miners, but every block, every 10 minutes, on average, only one miner gets to create a block. Similarly, in Ethereum, 
CM2.0, I believe, 12 seconds, in which one sequencer gets to decide which transactions sequenced and in what ordering. Okay, so any blockchain or most blockchain that you're familiar with are leader-based consensus. Leader-based consensus means that whether it's decentralized or not, at every point in time, at every latency round, so to speak, one entity, one node decides what is sequenced. You are all fine with this because you're saying, okay, if my transaction doesn't go in in the first round, it will go in in the second round. So you're not really concerned by this metric. But if you were pro players, like real DeFi, heavy financial players, traders, you know that you want to get the best price for your liquidity. If you were a heavy financial player, you would really enjoy the benefit of competition. Again, Caspa, as, as today, one block per second. This is the newest block. These are the oldest blocks. And what you see in this slice is three miners, three sequencers, have created blocks in parallel, which is a common phenomenon in the DAG. These are three miners that, due to the high block rate, haven't seen each other's blocks. This is the name DAG. The, name, the term DAG refers to directed acyclic graph. And the implication for you um, or for the user is that blocks messages can be sequenced in parallel. The fact that messages can be sequenced in parallel by every, uh, by every miner, you know, at a high speed, of course, is great for confirmation time. But again, if you go from 10 blocks per second or one block per 100 milliseconds, this seems like enough for confirmation times. You will feel awesome with Caspa with 10 blocks per second. You wouldn't want more. But I argue that you should want more. You see the testnet of Caspa with 10 blocks per second. The implication you see is immediate, more blocks per uh, unit, but more importantly for our context, what you see is more competition on sequencing transactions in that round. All these miners, all these sequencers that created blocks in parallel are all competing for your transaction. So consider you are a liquidity provider with uh, large funds. You want to get the best price for your assets. When a miner creates a block, the miner has to say, roughly how much they're willing to kick back to the users. Okay, so I'm created a block with transactions I can extract value from, as any sequencing layer can. And now I say, okay, I see that the outside transaction um, you know, gave me a benefit of, uh, or a profit of, uh, let's say, $200. I'm bidding $180 for this transaction. I'm keeping my profit. Another sequencer will be more generous with Alice. We'll give her $190 kickback. And you sort of aggregate these bids, these kickbacks, to which miner it makes more sense to allow to sequence Alice's transaction. So again, just a, your mental model should be simple first price auction or second price auction. Of course, in practice, this doesn't work. We need to go into more sophisticated methods. That said, I do, I do want to highlight the importance of 100 blocks per second. So N here in the table behind me, you see a comparison between first price auction and second price auction. You know that a competitive market becomes more competitive, more efficient, as there are more entities that participate in the competition. This would be kind of intuitive. Start with a monopoly. Monopoly is what happens today in Bitcoin sequencing, in Ethereum sequencing, in Solana sequencing. That's a monopoly. Today in Caspa, you have two, two and a half maybe blocks per round, meaning in parallel. So if we had today this system in place, It'll be like a duopoly or, or so, or that of that sort. If you imagine 100 blocks per second, you'll have a very good competition. So it will be enough for you to send your transaction to even like 7 or 8% of the sequencers, and you'll get a good price for your transaction. Okay, so think about it in general, more generally. The more parallelized the sequencing is, the more competitive it is, you can create more products that are basically competing with one another in the same round, in the same 10 or 100 milliseconds. And this might sound petty to you, but actually this is kind of the game in finance. You know that this is the game in traditional finance. People are optimizing for microseconds. We're used to think of a blockchain as something that is completely secure, cryptographically verified. You know, everything in the system is authenticated. We know who signed what and whether it's true or not according to the input inside the blockchain or the block DAG. However, most of the financial logic actually depends on the system outside. You need price feeds from outside to know whether your collateral has reached a certain special. You need to know prices for different assets. And all this data outside the blockchain theoretically cannot be verified. You need to use 
some economics to ensure or to hopefully ensure that the info is correct. So this depends on a price feed. You know, this oracle says ETH to BTC 1.2. The other says 2.3. All these uh, fluctuations within the same realm. A lot of the financial logic in our system depends on the oracles, which is surprising because you would have expected, you know, that everything is sec cryptographically secure within system. It is unless you need the data from the outside. And again, 100 blocks per second in parallel system, you can compete, you can arrange a competition between the different agents that are participating in that round and make sure that the competition pushes out outliers. So the answer is yes. The L1s are still relevant. The sequencing layers are the main thing that is relevant. It will remain relevant forever. Jonathan Sumpolinski and his Casper developers aren't so much focused on increasing Casper's market price in the short term. They are more focused on the technical aspect of Casper, which will make Casper eventually one of the biggest players on the entire crypto ocean. Casper is in good hands. The question is, will you have the long suffering or the patience to see Casper blossom or at least draw closer to its full potential? And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. If you are invested in Casper crypto crew, you got to realize Casper is a midterm to even long term hold, midterm being the end of the 2025 bull run. Success on this crypto ocean crypto crew comes to those who patiently wait. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Growing grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.